new name, lower prices, and a lot of new features. Today, we're taking a look at Visual Studio Code Spaces, and it is awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Code Day. Thank you very much for joining me today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below so you can support me and the channel. Visual Studio Code Spaces are cloud-hosted dev environments accessible from anywhere and from any device. The service has firstly been announced around November 2019 as Visual Studio Online, and the name change is just one of the news about this service. I've just created a new code space so we can explore it together. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see an end-to-end -end video on how to set up and customize Visual Studio Code Spaces. All right, let's take a look at it. To access the service, just go here to online.visualstudio.com and after the login, you will have this interface. And here I have my code space. And one cool thing is that you can change the size of it directly from here. Just open the menu over here and select change settings. I've created a Linux code space so I can only change between Linux instances. But of course, also Windows is available and supported. One new cool feature here, as you have seen, is that they've added the basic instances, which are smaller in size, so may not be suitable for everyone and every single use, but they are much cheaper. As you can see here, my code space is currently suspended because I'm not using it right now and so I don't want to pay for it. In fact, you only pay for active code space usage. The service will automatically suspend any inactive environment based on the idle setting you have. And of course, you can always manually suspend an environment at any point. Let's connect to the environment. You can either use the menu over here or simply click on the name. It takes few seconds to spin up if it is in the suspended state, so we have to wait. All right, everything seems to be ready. For sure, first thing you'll notice is that it looks exactly like VS Code. <laughs> this is impressive. If you are familiar with the VS Code, you will feel at home using this service. And if you're not, I'm pretty sure you will find your way around it pretty easily. Let's take a quick look at the menu bar. We have the menu here with which you can open files, perform the usual operations and even open terminal. Oh, that looks cool. Then you have your file hub, the search, the git manager and the debug manager. This is interesting. We'll see this in action later. Oh, look, you can even install extensions. Let's search for something. Let's search for Azure. Yep, basically same as VS Code. Next, this is where you can see all of your code spaces and navigate between them. And you can also disconnect from the current one or suspend one or the other if you have it. Then we have the GitHub pull record extension here, but I am not signed in at the moment. And finally, the live share plugin, which allows you to collaborate real time with your friends and colleagues. And of course, down here, we have some settings to customize your environment, like keyboard, theme, and so on and so forth. I already have some code files in here because I selected a repo during the creation of the code space. If you haven't had a Git repo from the beginning, then you have two options. You can either initialize an empty repo and configure everything manually, or you can clone one of the repos you have. To do so, go to the command palette using the setting menu over here, or press Ctrl Shift P. Then type clone and paste your repository URL over here. As I said, I already have some files in here and the project I have is a very basic Node.js application, but I want to see how powerful is Visual Studio Code Spaces. First, let's try to debug this thing. Just open the main.js over here, then let's go to the debug manager and click on run and debug. Seems like the application started and is listening on this address and port over here. But wait a minute, this is localhost. Would this work? Let's try. This is cool. Apparently, Visual Studio Code Spaces is able to remap somehow my localhost addresses and redirect it to its own service. Remember that we are running it in the browser. And yeah, here we have the application message. Let's try to change this message. Let's say, hello, YouTube. Let's save and restart this. Let's go back to the preview. And here we go. I'm really impressed by this. Let's see what happens if I open the Docker file instead. Okay, uh, if you can see over there, Codespace immediately recognizes it and recommends me to install this Docker extension. So let's do it. Well, that's been pretty quick. So now we have this new Docker tab over here. Wow, now I have full Docker manager experience in the browser. Now, if I right click in the Docker file, I can actually build the image. Let's try this. Let's give it a name. Yeah, that's fine. Boom, super fast. 
and my image is also being added to the image list over here. I wonder if I can execute it from here. Oh yeah, you can. And you can even run it interactively. That's pretty cool. Let's run it. Okay, apparently the container has started and you can also see it up here in the container list. Let's try right click. You have different options right here, like view logs, attach shell, and you can open in the browser. Let's try this out. This is awesome. Right now we are developing and containerizing an application using a complete IDE in the browser. We are running it in a container somewhere. We are managing it completely in the browser and we are connecting to it live. I love this thing. One more thing I want to try is connect to this code space from our VS code on my machine. What I had to do is installing the Visual Studio Code Spaces extension you can see here. And that adds this icon on the left of the screen which is the same we've seen before in the online version and which allows you to connect to your code spaces, suspend them and create a new ones. Here I have my Coder Dave Linux workspace, which is the one I was using before, and I can change it, connect or suspend it. When I click on the connect button, it loads the whole environment. As you can see in the lower left, it clearly highlights that we are opening a remote code space and now it's loaded and I have here the name of the code space. And if we look at the files, we have the same Node.js project we were working on before. And I want to say that I do not have these files on my local machine. Everything is in the cloud. So let's try and debug this. Run and debug. Let's open the URL. Here we go. Same experience. The only difference is, of course, that VS Code is proxy in the Visual Studio Code spaces. So I don't even see the remote URL. But rest assured that the compilation and the debug are actually happening in the cloud, not on my machine. Between the lower price, the new name, the basic instance size, and all the other features that the team has been shipping, I think there's never been a better time to try remote development using Visual Studio Code spaces. I really love this service and I can imagine a ton of use cases for it. And you, what do you think? Do you like the service? Have you tried it? Are you planning to try it? Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see an end-to-end -end video on how to set up and customize Visual Studio Code Spaces. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me today and see you soon at Coder Dave.